Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm Vision Rights. So today is gonna be a little bit of a different video just because um, if you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I have a dog named Carter. He's featured sometimes in and out of my YouTube videos, but on Instagram is where you really will see him. So I would get a couple questions on Instagram about, you know, dog questions about him, stuff like that. So I was like, you know what, let's just create a video. Here are the things you should know before buying a puppy, specifically a Yorkshire Terrier, aka a Yorkie. So before I even get into it, Let's meet Carter. Here's my baby. You wanna say hi? He needs a haircut. Say hi. Look. You see that? You see it? He is two years old and I got him when he was three months old. I do have a vlog of like the time when I saw him for the very first time and also his coming home vlog. So if you wanna go ahead and check that out, I'll leave them in the cards and also in the description bar. So go ahead and check that out. But yeah, so this is him. He's a silky Yorkie specifically. And yeah, he is super big. You wanna show them what you look like? Um, so the first thing, Yorkies specifically, they are very hard to train. Like, when it comes to anything. It is house training, potty training, and personal training. This little guy... Ooh, you got something in your face, baby. Okay, I'll clean it after. He went to personal training and he was something. He was barking all the time. He wasn't really listening to the instructor. He wasn't taking orders. House training, he would pee everywhere. Still kind of, still kind of, you know, do little mistakes here and there. And I'll get to that in a second. He's hard to house train and he doesn't take some commands well. I looked it up and they say that Yorkies are just very hard to train. They're very stubborn. So if you don't have patience, I wouldn't recommend a Yorkie for you. I would say get yourself another dog that's more obedient and listens because Yorkies don't, okay? Another thing, they could be sassy, territorial, and fussy, okay? Are you sleeping? They can't see your eyes. <laughs> Yorkies are small dogs, however, they think they are the biggest things in the world. They bark at bigger dogs, they always want to challenge bigger dogs. They basically talk back, and yes, they talk back. He huffs. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm calling you out. <laughs> he goes, when I say sit, <sighs> he goes like that. That's talking back to me. He doesn't listen, like that goes back to the first one, like commands or whatever. He ignores me half the time, like when I'm like, go to bed, he's like, like, literally looks away, and I'm like, I'm calling you out. See, he knows it. <laughs> so, for his um, territorial and not listening behavior, we do have a collar specifically for that. He doesn't have it on right now since he's in the house, but it's a beeping collar. What it does is if he barks, um, it beeps, and if he keeps barking, it just beep, beep, beeps, and then he gets the point. It's a sound that dogs hate. Um, he always falls asleep on my arms like a real baby. Found that dogs hate, so eventually he gets the point and it's a training uh, mechanism. So I highly, highly recommend that collar. Is that they need a lot of attention. They are attention-seeking dogs. And I would really recommend if you were to buy a puppy and you're bringing them home for the first time, try to pick them up maybe on a Thursday and take off a Friday. So you have Thursday to Sunday, depending on your schedule and what you do for work, um, you have all that time to be home with them. Because the first couple nights, I'm telling you, you ain't gonna sleep, they're not gonna sleep, they're gonna be crying, wailing, you're gonna be crying, wailing, and they always want to be with you. So it's, it's definitely a transition. I don't remember the day that I got him, but I do remember that it was a transition and that he required a lot of attention. Sorry if you can't see him. He's like hunching over. Their attention span sucks, okay? So you're gonna end up buying your puppy a lot of things. Chew toys, regular toys, plush toys, squeaky toys. They're not going to care. They're gonna like it for 2.5 seconds. It's like children, I suppose. You buy them so many things and you think they're gonna love it forever and they will like it for two seconds and go on to the next. So have a variety of toys. If you buy a whole bunch of new toys, I would suggest you introduce one thing at a time. If you introduce all of them at the same time, he's gonna like them all at the same time and hate them all at the same time. So hide toys and change them out interchangeably. You going to sleep, baby? Yeah. Okay. 
Yep, he's sleepy. He needs a nap. If you live with other people, right, a dog pays attention to who plays with them and who feeds them. So in Carter's case, I'm typically the one to give him breakfast, right? And so if my fiancé happens to give him breakfast one day, he ain't gonna eat it. He's not gonna touch it. He's gonna pout all day until I pretend I made it and I give it to him and he sees that I gave him the food that's when he eats the breakfast it's the weirdest thing in the world I don't know why I did look it up there is a reason for that they do associate different things with different people so pay attention to that if you live with other people try to stick with that certain person to give them the food not all dogs are like this but I'm I do know that Yorkies tend to be territorial and associate certain activities with certain parents if you will so my fiance is a fun parent so he mostly plays with him that's fine cool i'm the cuddling parent he only kind of lays on me like this oh and it's the same thing with so it's not just with food it's with grooming too i can only brush his teeth my fiance cannot brush his teeth he is terrified if my fiance brushes his teeth well for me i can only brush him and i can only brush his teeth oh this see i wish someone told me this next one don't don't buy too many things um, before getting your puppy. So when I knew that I was getting Carter, I went crazy. I bought beds. I bought clothes because, you know, York is a cute. Collars, leashes. I bought a whole bunch of stuff before even getting him. But then when I got him, he grew super fast. Like, I will insert a picture of what he looked like or a video of what he looked like when I first got him. And then now you just saw him. He's super big. I feel like he grew overnight. But it, either way, he was super small for things that got him, but then he outgrew them quickly. So don't go too crazy. I would suggest maybe waiting until you get him. Like I said, try to get him on a weekend or something. And then um, go and buy things together. Like go to PetSmart, Petco together and just like size things and make sure you're getting the correct items because you don't want to waste time or money at all. So, But the, the things that you can get um, without knowing their sizes are like had the necessities for his first night. I think for his first night he had his blanket, his pillow, um, and puppy pads. Like those are necessities you could get, you could get those without knowing their size. If you live in an apartment, having a puppy can be hell. It's a little difficult. I say this because puppies and dogs aren't the quietest things. And if you have neighbors, you know, they complain. Uh, this little guy has gotten a complaint or two so far. If you have rug in your apartment, that's even worse. Because housebreaking them, like I said for the first one, they're terrible at housebreaking. And they pee everywhere. And so if, the, if you have carpet in your apartment... Just know that they will make mistakes and they will pee on your carpet. So make sure you have a stain remover um, that is really good for your carpet. Again, I will leave what we use in the description box. So go ahead and check that out. Have, so we have a stain remover spray. And we also have this um, like stop marker or something like that spray. I don't remember the name of it at the top of my head. But what it is is that you spray it on the carpet and they know not to ever go there again. So again, check out the description box. Next tip. Oh my goodness. Having a dog is expensive. And so many different levels. Pet insurance. So, I don't know if this is not a thing. I don't know if it's just me being the person I am. But he has two pet insurance. He has the one through, like, you know, PetSmart. And then he has an emergency um, insurance. It's kind of like when you're an adult. You have, like, multiple insurances or, like, deductibles and all that stuff. He has two insurances because if he's sick in the middle of the night, he can't go to PetSmart. He has to go to another, like, ER vet, but that doesn't cover that insurance. Like, I didn't know all that. I would say not just um, insurances, but grooming. He has a lot of hair, as you can see. He's a silky Yorkie. Show them your hair. He needs a haircut right now. That's why you can't even see his eyes. But, I mean, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. At least he doesn't have to have it that often. But it's still, you know, a cost. It's still something you have to pay for. Yorkies have the most energy. And I think that's puppies in general. So this is probably a general thing. But they have a lot of energy. He's sleeping right now just because, I don't know. I feel like you have to wear them out. So if you don't have time to play with your puppy... If you don't have space in your apartment or in your house for for them to run around, you probably shouldn't get one because they require a lot of attention because they have a they have a lot of energy. Another thing that I wish I knew is that they are picky eaters. So, 
don't just buy any and all food. Do some research of what uh, foods Yorkies and small dogs can eat because they have a smaller stomach. You don't want to have too many like artificial ingredients or harsh ingredients in the food. I will also put the brand of food that Carter uses for you guys to check out because I really do like those ingredients and his treats and everything. I They're all natural um, and when I can I try to give him like actual real food. Like earlier he had apples. Um, he had pumpkin this morning. Oh my goodness, I really see. All these tips are something that I wish someone told me, like, for real, for real. This next one. Try not to make your dog a house dog or antisocial. We bought him in November, and we live in New England, so it, it's cold. So, because he had to be um, inside for a couple months, he was three months, he had to get all his necessary shots and everything, and then it's it's cold, it's winter, it's snowing outside. He didn't go outside very much, if at all. So he, I house broke him. Um, he didn't get to really interact with other dogs for a couple of months. He became very antisocial. I personally feel like he has anxiety because once he's around other dogs, he doesn't know how to, how to act. He doesn't know what to do. And he doesn't know what to do when he goes outside because he doesn't go outside. So, I made this mistake of making him a house dog, per se, just because I got him in the winter months. So, if you can prevent it, try to get your dog, you know, depending on where you live, at a time where he, he or she could be outside, just so you can make them a dog. Like, I feel like I have a house dog. <laughs> I don't know why you sleep like this. But, you know, lesson learned. That's why we have to do some extra training on him. Because he's just very comfortable and used to being inside. So just like humans, do a second and third opinion when it comes to vets. Like, I know we're not dogs. We're not animals. So we don't really know what they need. However, I feel like sometimes you can't go with the first opinion. So, trust your judgment. He went to the vet and they was going to charge us like $400 for something. And I was like... No, that's not happening. They said there was something wrong with his leg. This He jumps off couches, okay? So it's not his leg. So mommy intuition, he's fine. I, I figured out what was the issue. But needless to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket when it comes to your vet. Make sure you have second or third opinions, different vets if you can, different locations, just so you don't have to end up spending a lot of money when you don't have to because they're already very expensive as it is. So these are the... Things that I wish someone told me before I bought a Yorkie puppy. If you're looking to buy a Yorkie puppy or a Shih Tzu or a Mountie Poo or, you know, any other small dogs, um, some of these tips will apply to them. But Yorkies, I know for a fact, are one of a kind. Aren't you, Carter? <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, this is this was answering a couple questions that I had in my DMs. But also, I figured, why not? You know, I am a dog owner. He is my first dog. And I think I'm doing very well. Alright, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.